With us today, a change maker. After being di- diagnosed at 13 with Frederic Ataxia and spending her life in a wheelchair, Shabika made it her mission to spread awareness of the difficulties people of determination face and is now dedicating her life to impactful change in our community. And we are so grateful to have her on the show. Welcome, Shabika Carla. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Um, you're doing incredible work in the community. Thank you. And we're going to talk about Wings of Angels in a little bit. Yeah. Um, but I do want to talk about your journey. Um, let's begin with Frederic Ataxia and what happened at 13. Where were you in your life then? I was doing very well in school. I was the top and I was uh, very good in extracurricular activities and all that. But I had to drop out of school at the age of 13. Because my classroom was on the first floor, and um, and the doctors had told my parents that it wouldn't be safe for me to climb the steps every day to go to my classroom, and there was no lift in my school, so I had to drop out. And um, so this when the first time the accessibility bit hit me. But then, uh, then it was too much happening, so I couldn't really do anything about it. Then years later, me and my elder sister, we had gone to both a move in India. And there were many steps to my seat. So four men had to carry me to my seat. So I found this very discomforting because I am a big girl. So um, then after the movie, my sister is like, I'll go and speak to the manager about it. When she went and she spoke to the manager about it, he's like, actually you people have come from outside India and that's why you're facing the difficulty. There are not many people on the beach in India. And then me and my sister, we spoke about it. And we realized that, you know, it's known that there are not many people on the wheelchair in India. It's just that people on the wheelchair don't go out in India. Because there's no accessibility. And then that's how Bingo Angel started. Wow. So at that age, even as a teenager, you knew that there was no access for people in India. And that's how the story started. Yes. Had you been in Dubai at that point? I was living in Dubai and going to India for a holiday. And when you noticed in the cinema that you didn't have access to a wheelchair, is that common, a very common problem everywhere? Yes, because people are not aware of it. So how do you make people aware? You make people aware by t- informing people about it. And if you try to spread as much awareness as you can, we like we do something called um, Accessibility Day, where we go around the city in Dubai and we find out places like all these uh, ways, you know. To spread awareness, like people should be aware about what's happening. Were you, when you dropped, when you couldn't go back to that school, was there another school that you could go to that had wheelchair yeah. access? Okay. That had a lift also. Uh, I managed my way out always. So you found a new school? Yes. Did you finish your education in India? Yeah. No, I was studying in Abu Dhabi. Then I completed my schooling in Dubai. I've gone to university and I've done my master's work. Amazing. Yeah. So university, master's, and then you've also won many awards. So there was the She the Change in India, uh, yes. and there was something else in Dubai, a Majalis Award. Yeah, my She Gnayan. Wow. Yeah. And that was for the work that you're doing with Wings of Angels? Yeah, it was for my social contribution. That's amazing. Can you, in case people don't fully know the work that Wings of Angels have done, 
How much access have you introduced in Dubai? We have built over a thousand wheelchair ramps in Dubai as of now. And being the angel says, huh? Soon going to launch an app at the end of the year to help spread awareness about accessibility for people with different impairments. That's mobility impairment, visual impairment, cognitive impairment, and your hearing impairment and help connect them with the right career opportunities. So it feels like now we're expanding our horizons. So that's so amazing. You're giving people access and then you're also connecting people with career opportunities that they may not have had before. Yeah, because everyone needs it. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> we all need jobs. <laughs> have, what about the people? So like, from the outside, this is like amazing. You're putting access into a building so you can get it. What about the people that you've met? Have you had kind of like good reactions from people that you've literally been able to help? People have been like, they've been very supportive and they are very thankful also. But also since they can really like, I don't really want people to be thankful or anything. Mm. Thank you. I just want to get the message across. That's important. That's a very, very strong message and it makes a lot of sense. How do you connect people with employment opportunities? How do you find those? We are doing this currently on app. We have recently worked with Cumin Arabia. Like they wanted a person with you. Like they've been helping us a lot with the work and all. They've been helping us with the app launch. And like they wanted to hire someone with a disability for a job and they wanted to give a job. So it be advertised it for an appeal. And the job is almost done like. Someone has told me that, you know, we are in the end stages of the talk. So the interviews went well and all. Right. So the job will be done, yeah. It's so interesting because I think what you do is obviously you're spreading awareness and we're thinking about our office here and you know what can we do to improve accessibility and it's something that we are genuinely looking at and you know there's there's one or two ramps here or there's one or two steps here that you know we can add a ramp to. Um, you're spreading awareness that if someone is there and their office isn't accessible for people with wheelchairs, what do you recommend as like you know I'm not a boss I'm a an employee, what do you recommend people to do? Do they get in touch with Wings of Angels or do they just start rapping on their manager's door being like, hey, this is what we need to do? See, uh, you know, even the Wings of Angels and on there tomorrow, it should be wheelchairs. So, you know, what's like the most important thing is that you get aware and try to make your manager aware about it. And like, you know, you just have to get a wider place for a wheelchair to enter and make sure there are no steps and all. So this one you tell you. And is there anything else um, that we need to be aware of? So steps is obviously uh, something obvious, but is there anything maybe like lowering taps or what are kind of, or maybe door handles? Yeah, is there anything obvious that we could fix? A wheelchair accessible bathroom. The taps, the wash basin should be lower. The entrance should be bigger. It shouldn't be too slippery. Mm. There are a lot of things. And is that all listed on Wings of Angels? We try to spread awareness. Like whoever contacts us, we are always there to help them out. It's amazing. Um, it's such an amazing story and people can find it all, more information on Wings of Angels. Also, by the way, if you've been following Love in Dubai for a couple of years, we had Shabika on Blessed in Dubai where she shared her story, her journey. And actually, I think we'll link that beneath because then people can really kind of learn all about your journey from your teenage years. Um, but Shabika, Carla, thank you so, so much for your time. We really appreciate I... it. And we really appreciate kind of learning a little bit more about something that uh, I think we can introduce in our offices. And I'm sure there's people here who probably are hopefully learning that too. So thank you for sharing your story. Thank you. 
That is it for us on the Love and Dubai show. We're with you every single weekday morning, same time, same place. Shabika Carla, Wings of Angels. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. <laughs>